In this video, we are forecasting a massive storm that will plow through the central U.S. The Storm Prediction Center has already put out an enhanced risk of severe weather today with a 30% chance of damaging hail. Also, extremely heavy snow will fall on the northern side of this storm with near blizzard conditions. We're going to look at all angles of this big system and how it could ultimately affect you. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Busy day today. We've got rain, snow, hail, tornadoes, pretty much everything. So you know what we've got to do. We've got to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's just jump right into it. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America, and as you can see right now, there's really not a whole lot going on. It's very quiet for the most part over here on the East Coast. Had a couple showers and storms popping up down here in southeastern Texas, but right here, this is our big storm that's forming right now. If I zoom in here on the infrared satellite, you can literally see the swirl already with our big time low pressure system that's eventually going to eject off to the northeast, cause our severe weather in the central and southern plains, and then our potential blizzard up here in Wyoming, Montana, and uh, the extreme western portions of the Dakotas. Now, this system will ultimately affect everybody, even people on the East Coast as we go further into the future. Additionally, we have some stuff going on down here in the tropics. Look at this. We've got a storm named Pamela coming up the coast here. And then we've got a couple areas of interest down here around the Caribbean uh, that we've got to watch closely as we go into the future, okay? So a lot of stuff packed into this video. I've got timestamps and chapters down in the description if you want to skip around, but I recommend watching the whole video, okay? Let's start forecasting on the weather models. All right, we're going to start off with the HRRR model looking at the simulated radar. We're going to focus on the severe weather portion of the storm first because we do have that enhanced risk of severe weather today from the Storm Prediction Center, and that's broken down into categories. We've got a 5% chance of tornadoes here from the northern portion of Texas into uh, western and central Oklahoma, all the way up into western and central Kansas, and then we've got a 30% chance of a damaging wind, and then most impressively, we've got a 30% chance of significant damaging hail here once again in that little bullseye uh, from south central portions of Kansas through western Oklahoma into the northeastern portion of the panhandle of Texas there. So all modes of severe weather are possible here today and let's watch that unfold on the HRRR. This is the high resolution rapid refresh model. If you want to keep up with the date and time it's always going to be displayed right there above my head. And here we are at 8 p.m. today. Now remember this is an eastern time so this is you know 7 p.m. central 6 p.m. mountain and we've got those big storms popping up here right Right along the border of Colorado and Kansas, okay? In the beginning here, we do believe that there might be a couple supercells form up. This is also the time when you need to start watching out for those big hailstones. Obviously, we've got a lot of cold air locked into the upper levels of this storm. So the higher those updrafts get, the bigger the hailstones will get. Uh, and we're going to continue to see storms form all the way down into the uh, Oklahoma and Texas panhandles there. And then around 11 p.m., we're going to have a bunch of supercells possibly congealing together here from the panhandle of Texas into south central Kansas, okay? This is where... Uh, uh, we expect some of the strongest stor storms to occur. And this is also when the tornado threat starts to ramp up a little bit, okay? And that tornado threat is going to carry us into the overnight and early morning hours into all the way into 3 a.m. Uh, on October 13th. This is Wednesday. But the good news is, is as we go later on into the night, this is going to congeal into a big line of storms. And whenever we have a line of storms like this, uh, it's less likely that we actually see tornadoes, especially strong and long track destructive ones. However, at this point, it's still very possible that we get damaging tornadoes in Kansas, and I'm kind of concerned about the southern side down here, these tail end Charlies. Uh, we could get a supercell or two kind of be discreet down here uh, in the southwestern Oklahoma area, uh, and we could see possibly some uh, big time tornadoes down there uh, due to this, okay? And this is once again, this is a problem where we're seeing tornadoes in the dark, or like we say here, uh, naders in the dark. You never want to be uh, caught out in the dark uh, with a nader coming at you, because them things are dangerous enough on their own, but when you can't see them coming, it's even worse. So make sure you have some some way of getting weather warnings tonight, okay? You want to be asleep tonight at 3 a.m. You got to work tomorrow. There ain't no point in staying up all night and obsessing over this. Uh, just go ahead and get you a no weather radio. They sell them at Walgreens and Target and all that stuff and, and put you some batteries in that thing and it will wake you up if there's a tornado warning, okay? Don't rely on the siren. Sirens don't work sometimes and sometimes you just can't hear it. And then as we go later on into the night around 6 a.m., the tornado threat starts to diminish, but we still have severe weather working through eastern Kansas, central Oklahoma, lots of heavy rain rain up here in Iowa, and these storms are going to continue to fizzle out as they get into uh, eastern Oklahoma, portions of Missouri, and they might try to form up again and cause uh, some additional severe weather in Illinois around the St. Louis area on Wednesday, but nothing 
nothing crazy is expected there, okay? Uh, I've been calling this storm a jumbo storm for multiple days. I think a week ago we started talking about this, and I, you know, I'm not, I wasn't playing around when I said this was going to be a giant, massive storm. Here's a look at this bad boy on the uh, simulated infrared satellite, and look at that. A classic mid-latitude North American uh, monster storm coming through, uh, once again causing severe weather on this side, and then uh, a big snowstorm on the other side, and then lots of cool, dry air coming in behind it there. So that'll be an interesting satellite presentation as we go forward. And if we take a look at the lower level jet stream, the 850 millibar winds here, you can tell why we're most concerned about the tornado threat later on in the afternoon and evening uh, when that lower level jet stream kind of uh, ramps up. Okay, this is necessary in a situation like this where we have a negatively tilted trough. We have winds feeding into the storm like this, meeting up with winds like this. That mid-level speed of the winds really determines how likely it is for those uh, rapid rotations to happen on the uh, base level of the storms that cause mesocyclones and then eventually tornadoes. And we're going to have a lot of that uh, juice there. <laughs> Seasoned meteorologists uh, will probably not <laughs> appreciate me calling this tornado juice, but that's exactly what it is. Uh, plenty of it there, right there. Thick, juicy tornado juice right there. Uh, in southern Kansas, western portions of Oklahoma, okay? So from 11 p.m. all the way into uh, midnight, 1, 2 a.m. Look at that. It really ramps up to where we have a, a jet stream screaming down here from 70 to 80 knots, uh, which is telling me that we're almost certainly going to have a couple of uh, tornadoes down here. Some of them could be really strong. Uh, but once again, the good news is, is that where they're going to be associated with that line of storms, not a lot of discrete supercells out there. Uh, so I don't think we're going to see, you know, a, a, a massive tornado outbreak or anything. Doesn't matter if it's massive or not though, because if one little tornado comes down your street, it's going to change your life. Okay. So let's go ahead and prepare for it. Let's do everything we can to protect our life and property. And if nothing happens, hey, it's better safe than sorry. It's what I always say. All right. So let's take a look at this major snowstorm over here in the North Plains and the Rocky Mountains. It's already going to be snowing this morning for a lot of places uh, around the time that I post this video. Maybe some thunder snow down here in the higher elevations of Colorado and Utah as some of those heavier bands of precipitation are moving up into colder air. Lots of heavy snow falling in Wyoming and Montana. And then right here, you know, wherever that low pressure system ends up being, the closer you are to that, the closer you are to these feeder bands this uh, moisture coming into the cold air there. The closer you are to that, the more snow you're going to receive, the heavier it's uh, it's going to come down, and the stronger the winds are going to be, okay? This is not just, uh, you know, some snow falling. We're also going to have some winds there. Ooh, look at that. 7 a.m. Wednesday, October 13th, extreme western portions of uh, South Dakota and North Dakota and over here in Montana and Wyoming. That is going to be one heavy snow band that sets up there. It's going to dump snow. So be ready for that on Wednesday morning. But also, it's around this time where we can expect to see some surface wind gusts too. So let's take a look at those wind gusts right there around the time that that uh, snow really starts kicking up. We're talking about, you know, 20, 30, maybe 40 mile an hour wind gusts. Uh, so it's going to be near blizzard conditions intermittently here. This isn't going to be like a constant blizzard where, you know, it's snowing heavy and, and the snow's going sideways the entire time. It's just going to kind of be like these intermittent uh, heavier snow showers that come through uh, with the big bursts of winds. We might see a little bit of drifting snow here, but I think that a lot of the snow is going to be heavier and wet. Uh, so uh, that it takes that dry, uh, fine stuff to cause the big giant snow drifts. So I just want you to be uh, aware of the fact that we're also going to have winds here associated with this heavy, wet snow, which could lead to a few power problems as well. Just be ready for all this uh, over here in Wyoming, Montana, North and South Dakota there, all the way up into portions of Canada too. I don't think it's going to make it all the way into Manitoba, uh, but it's coming for you right there on the border uh, north of Montana and North Dakota. So how much snow can we get? Well, it looks like still, like we've been talking about for almost a week now, somebody's going to see around 30 inches of snowfall, okay? Now, uh, some of this may melt intermittently as the storm's going on, so you might not, you know, have a total of 30 inches of snow on the ground, but certainly 30 inches of snow will fall, uh, and it looks like the bullseye is going to be somewhere right here in eastern Montana. Now, this has shifted north. Uh, we were looking at uh, Wyoming uh, certainly being the uh, bullseye uh, just a few days ago. This is not just going to be a high elevation storm, especially right here in the apex, uh, the strongest portion over here. Uh, we're going to see heavy snow even in the valleys, okay? So get ready for a big uh, classic October storm uh, to move through Montana there. Uh, and also, of course, in the higher elevations here in the Rocky Mountains, we're going to see a couple 
multiple places that see a foot or more, maybe even two feet. So make sure you are ready for that. All right, let's zoom out here to the whole US now and do the extended forecast. Uh, I know a lot of you guys, you don't like it when I focus in on an area for so long, but I mean, everything's been happening over here in the central US. And that's what, you know, it's my job here is to talk about the most uh, important parts of the weather story. I can't be the local mesoscale weatherman for every little nook and cranny of the US, uh, but I can as long as I focus on the biggest storms, okay? And that's what I'm trying to do with this channel. But let's get a quick overview of what the weather's gonna be like over the next uh, 200 hours or so. Uh, here's our big storm that's working through today. Uh, snow in Wyoming and Montana. Severe weather in Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas. Uh, that's going to eject off to the northeast and bring down much cooler air down with it uh, all the way down into Colorado, Nebraska. You're going to see uh, temperatures way down into the 20s and 30s there. That cold front's going to try to move to the south and east a little bit and maybe even bring some cooler air into the Ohio Valley, uh, into the Great Lakes region. Uh, another little low pressure system may try to form here uh, over the weekend on Saturday, October 16th bring some more rain once again into the Ohio Valley, maybe all the way down here into the deep south and some cooler temperatures behind that. Uh, of course, we're going to see some rain over here in New England and the Northeast, uh, possibly on Saturday into Sunday. But look at this for the most part, for uh, almost the whole United States, except for the Northeast and the Northwest here. Uh, this is probably one of the quietest weather days we're going to have this year. <laughs> We've got nice seasonable temperatures resurging into the Rocky Mountain region. Uh, you know, we're cooled off here a little bit on the East Coast, but still, you know, it's pretty warm. We've got some rain and snow moving into the Pacific Northwest, but that goes away. And look at this still all the way on Tuesday, October. October 19th, very quiet, favorable weather through much of the US. And that is just the pattern. That's the pattern. Okay, October 21st, still very quiet and very dry out there. Here's a look at the total precipitation over the next 240 hours. And the vast majority of all of this comes from the storm system that we're talking about today. Uh, and once that gets out of here, we're dry. We're high and dry. Look at this. Portions of South Carolina may not receive a drop of rain over the next 240 hours. Same thing over here in Nevada and uh, California. This year has been such a roller coaster of uh, severe weather that I'm sure we will all uh, gladly accept the break. And then if we look at that uh, 10 day temperature anomaly reading, uh, for the most part over the next 10 days we're going to be a little bit warmer than average on the east coast and a little bit cooler than average on the west coast and that's that's an average over 10 days there's going to be some days where it's hotter and colder but that's the general pattern right now all right last but not least we are still in hurricane season so we got to get an update on the tropics and we do have a couple things going on out there in the part of the world that we like to keep up with as far as uh, keeping up with the tropical weather we do have a little disturbance that we saw on satellite earlier uh, near the dominican republic uh, that may try to wander up here and turn into a little bit of something something north of the bahamas there is only a 10 percent chance of a cyclone formation in five days with this one as the northern portion of a tropical wave is producing a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms once again uh, not really seeing anything even on the forecast models with this but yeah we're watching it and then there's another little area of interest down here but the national hurricane center actually has a zero percent chance of a cyclone formation in five days as a tropical wave located near the windward islands uh, has continued to become less organized this morning. So this is something that we were watching a little bit closer earlier, but as since, you know, kind of uh, faded away. But we still can see further development uh, all the way through, you know, uh, late October into early November. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on the tropics because I know a lot of people now that watch this channel are here from uh, the Gulf Coast and from the East Coast from all of the uh, tropical weather that we've been dealing with. So, you know, uh, even though we're transitioning into kind of like a fall and winter weather coverage kind of thing here on the channel, uh, I am going going to keep my eyes like a hawk uh, on this uh, National Hurricane Center page and the forecast models in the tropics uh, just so I can be the first that alerts you if anything significant pops up out here, okay? And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for me, I'm going to try to be down in the comments for about 30 minutes or so after this video goes up responding to everybody. So get to leaving those comments now. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Goodbye. Ooh.